Hi folks, well the new bolts are arrived for the worktop, so we're going to start off today by uh, fitting them. So I'm just knocking them in so they're all below, below the surface and locked in place. Just really move all this stuff off or something at the moment. So now I've got all those uh, hammered in, I'll just run the square over the tops just to check that they are sitting below the surface. And they're all fine. So now all those are hammered in, I'm going to mix up the epoxy that I'm just going to use to fill the holes. I guess you're supposed to cut that rather than just snap it, but it won't matter too much. Because I'm going to be using quite a lot of this. Mix up the whole tube. It's really quite thick. Really don't want to get any of this on the on the top surface. Oh, fuck it. it should sand down anyway. Right, so I'll leave that to settle now. I've scraped off all the excess. I'll leave it to go off, and then if I need any additional filler, uh, I'll just use wood filler on top of that. So that should uh, stop the bolts from turning, uh, but they are coach bolts anyway, so it shouldn't really turn, but it adds a bit more of the structural integrity back into the wood that I take out by uh, drilling partially through the wood. So. That's my thinking behind using the uh, epoxy rather than just wood filler. Hopefully that bit's stronger. So while all that's drying, I'll just uh, move it over to one side. I'll make a start marking and drilling this uh, plate that goes below the hob uh, so I can affix the brackets where they need to be to hold the hob in place. Right, now I've got those holes marked, I'll just drill them out to uh, 6mm. That'll do just fine. Right, now I've got both sides drilled, I'm going to temporarily just uh, bolt these uh, brackets down. Because what is going to happen eventually once this is on uh, the worktop in the position it's going in I'm going to drill all the way through the worktop use one of these countersink bolts up from the bottom so it will come up through the worktop through this plate like so and then uh, through the bracket so it won't stick up as far as that because uh, It'll have the work top holding it down a bit. But what I want to do is just mark this and uh, fasten it in place so I can drill the holes through the uh, hob sides. So line it up where it's going to be front and back. But with the bracket on the outside like that. So provided this is where it needs to be front and rear, where that, that hole is now will be where the hole needs to be. 
And using the transfer punch, uh, make sure that the uh, punch mark lines up with the centre of the hole where I want it. So we've got the hole marked, or where the hole will be, is now marked uh, perfectly. Now I've drilled the holes inside the stove, that's uh, how it's going to be fastened on, just with those little allen head bolts. Now I've got all the holes drilled in this, I'm going to give it a coat of uh, barbecue paint, just going to use some of this Rust-Oleum. It's green but it's not going to be uh, noticed anyway because it's going to be underneath the stove. I would have liked to get a matching colour but uh, I think it's uh, pushing it a bit too far, spending another 10 quid on it can of paint or whatever so I just use the green now I've had a few great uh, suggestions from uh, both uh, Colonel Chimp and uh, Glenn at uh, South West Wilderness about uh, putting some kind of uh, covering over this or insulation between this and the stove just to add a bit more um, protection uh, to the worktop um, Glenn uh, suggested a plumber's uh, soldering mat uh, or soldering mats blanket type thing um, so I've ordered uh, a couple of those to try out but I also got this which has arrived first and this is just a thin silicon uh, baking sheet which uh, will fit perfectly underneath the stove there so uh, I'll see which works the best I was worried about uh, crumbs and stuff uh, getting underneath onto the uh, fiberglass uh, plumber's mat uh, and getting mouldy whereas this could be quite easily wiped down but uh, I'll see uh, which I prefer when the other mats arrive but first as I say I'm going to give it a coating uh, with this uh, heat proof paint well folks it's the following day I'm kind of on a push uh, to get this as finished as I can because it's to go out for its first use tomorrow uh, for the Easter holidays so today I'm going to sand down, uh, just finished sanding these uh, holes that are filled with the resin and uh, just a bit of filler. Uh, that's painted, I uh, kind of ran out of paint but uh, the paint is just to stop stop rust forming on it. Uh, so I'll get that uh, all fitted together. Uh, I got the strap <coughs> for the gas bottle in there, that's just a roof rack strap. Uh, that I've fed through the back holes and um, cinched down. I put a couple of staples in the back to stop the strap moving about. So the two two holes, there's one there, one there. The strap runs underneath the fabric. So I just put a couple of staples in there just now. If I had the straps before I covered it, I would have uh, put the staples underneath the fabric, obviously. Another thing I've got to do is I'm not happy with the way uh, these holes look, uh, the way I've trimmed the uh, fabric. So I'm going to make up some uh, trim covers, just uh, like little donuts like this uh, out of ply. Uh, I'll probably cut them down to about half that uh, width uh, and then just paint them blue. I'll show you how I do them in a minute. So to make these donuts, uh, first drill the outer diameter hole uh, which for this purpose was a 57 mil a two and a quarter inch uh, and then the inner is 32 uh, mil to line up with what I've already drilled in the uh, sides of the cupboards get them to that stage and then just finish them up on the bench sander. So when they're in place and they're painted blue this is what they should look like. Should uh, neatly cover all them staples 
and like uh, protect the material from uh, further tearing. So while the paint on the donuts is drying, I'm going to add some more trim to the edge of these uh, cabinets. And what I'm going to be using is some of this is like L-shaped um, rubber edging, uh, designed to bang children's heads off. <laughs> or uh, no, I think it's uh, designed to uh, prevent children or uh, babies banging their uh, heads on sharp edges um, so I'm gonna put this just really just to finish these edges off here and to protect the vinyl edge so it doesn't uh, tend to peel off so that's both the cabinets there with the trim put on the edge They're just to protect the corners it's uh, not very noticeable which is good because that's what I wanted so I've got the uh, worktop fully sanded down now and it's time to apply the vinyl. Uh, so I'm going to follow the advice of uh, Colonel Chimp, put a bit of heat into it this time with my heat gun, but just on low. Uh, I don't want to melt the stuff. And that's the work top all finished. Looking pretty decent. Had a bit of trouble in the corners, but I think I've got, got it looking as best as I can. So it's all uh, fastened in place. Uh, I'm just getting on and just uh, sorting out uh, where the hob's going to sit. And uh, I've screwed through the work top and got these brackets fastened on so that plate is now bolted through the worktop so I'm going to now add the uh, ended up getting two of the uh, plumber's uh, mats so we're just going to add them, stick them underneath so thanks Glenn for that uh, suggestion I decided I'm just going to keep that uh, silicon mat uh, just for a worktop protector and uh, just use the um, soldering mats uh, underneath the stove to stop the heat getting to the worktop. So I get on, fasten all this together, and then I'll show you it finished. And that's the heat mats fastened down. So next, I'm just going to put the stove on and uh, bolt it in place using the brackets I made up. So that's it in, and uh, totally finished, uh, apart from uh, undercoating just underneath the uh, worktop and uh, the little donut trims that I've still to put on but the paint's still wet on them I didn't want to damage uh, the backs of those seats you can see there's the straps that uh, fasten it to uh, underneath the 
seats in front and it's got the seat belt that holds it in place down there and then the work top is fastened in by the wing nuts and stuff it's the same in the uh, back cupboard here and seat belt down there and uh, the wing nuts so it's all very secure not going to move very far at all and I suppose I should check that the stove works so first thing just turn the gas on so just in there so both burning away okay pretty good I've got um I've got a carbon monoxide uh, detector on order so uh, I'll be fitting that as soon as it comes so this will be the last of the Bills videos uh, thanks for watching if you've watched the whole series or thanks for watching if you just watched this one video um, I will be doing one final uh, video just showing the full thing with all its accoutrements and uh, uh, hopefully cooking something alright thanks for watching and uh, thanks for all your help, everyone who made suggestions. Bye for now.